the 53 election, it was not held yet. Dr. Jagan speaking at a public meeting at Plantation Diamond. This is by a place called the Iron Bridge. By right where the factory is, there was a bridge used to turn it with a winch, it used to raise up, and you got to put it down and vehicles can pass and that sort of thing. He was on a soapbox speaking one night without loudspeaker, and I listened to him. Young man, handsome, articulate, commanding, so to speak, of the entire crowd. And at the end of the meeting, I spoke with him. And, um, but during the meeting, I told my friends, and I remember some of them, we were sitting there together, don't worry, one day I will speak like him. That was a joke. I never dreamt that I could speak like him. I never dreamt that I'll be in politics as such, but I was talking like any other little person in an area and making my points. And he said, you must help. We need loudspeaker. He, since I know Dr. Jagan, he always mobilized and organized. And I said, when you hold the next meeting, I will get you a loudspeaker, which I did. And I, I chaired that meeting as a young fellow. I was in my teens. That first meeting with he and I led me to help in the 1953 election on the East Bank, particularly in my area. The candidate was Dr. J.P. Lachman Singh. And then <clears throat> we made closer contact. And when the constitution was suspended, I remember going to his surgery and he giving me thunder to sell. And I used to go very faithfully distribute and sell the thunder and take the couple of dollars there. It wasn't anything much. I became an active member of the People's Progressive Party. I was made chairman of the Grove, Grove East Bank group of the party. I eventually rose to chairman of the constituency. These occur within the shortest possible time. And in 1958, I was elected a member of what was called in the General Council, now the Central Committee. So I've been a member of what is the Central Committee of the People's Progressive Party since 1958. And I'm there throughout. In 1957, I was appointed the manager for the campaign. The candidate was Fred Bowman. So I managed the campaign at the 57 election. An important thing is, at this time, J.P. Lachman Singh was not with the PPP. He had gone with, the, with Burnham at that time. This time, in 53, I was working for Lachman Singh. In 57, I, of course, supported the PPP candidate like I supported in 53. Fred Bowman won overwhelmingly. And I became more active, closer to all the work of the party, going out outside of my constituency areas, so to speak, in other areas, holding meetings, bottom house meetings, public meetings, distributing thunder, and I was part of the total political process. In 61, I was the campaign manager for the candidate in the same area, Lower Demara River. Candidate was Ranji Chandi Singh. Of course, success again. It was first past the post, he won. In 64, I became the candidate. This was when proportional representation was introduced and I was number four on that list, which is high up on the list itself. And on the 7th of December, 1964, I was declared elected a member of the Legislative Council. Now that he has had his initial contact with politics, just after his 17th birthday, 
the young pundit must now face all the other challenges. But how was he viewed and seen by other supporters and activists of the party? First meeting with Pandit, I call him Pandit Ji, was in 1955, because at that time, I resided on the East Bank and he resided there also. And we met for the first time when he was campaigning for the PPP and uh, tried to convert me to the PPP, but at that time he didn't know that I was already a member of the PPP. He was an ardent supporter of very ardent and committed supporter of the PPP, other than doing his duty, his functions as a pundit. RIP was one of the, the first set of persons after Ashton Chase, uh, the team with Ashton Chase, that came into the movement to explain, and he is a very good talker. He's very convincing. And um, on, on the East Bank, he did a mighty lot of work in trying to convince people of all races. You see, this is the remarkable thing that many people do not really know, re as I call him, Panditji. Um, I think within his heart, he felt that politics belonged to all of us, irrespective of race or color, or is irrespective of your social standing. And so he was on the campaign trail day and night. He was an activist in that he could talk to the, the moneyed class and he could talk to the ordinary man. And uh, I should state here that it was during these years that um, Pandit was invited by me to the Houston Matya. And um, we had a very good um, service. And when we were finished, he said, you know, Philomena, you still have got your political work to do. That was the type of activist he was. Any person, he tried to, con because politics then was in its infant stage, and people really didn't understand politics and what the PPP and Chelly Jagan was all about. And therefore, it meant that, that comrades in those years had to convince people beyond the shadow of a doubt that we were real and that we really wanted to develop Guyana to help not only the older people, but to bring Guyana such development that our children could inherit. In 68, we had the first rigged election in the country. At that election, I witnessed things which were unbelievable. So the will of the people was thwarted. Democracy was shattered. The clock, or the arm of the clock of real freedom was reversed. And we traveled into an arena of virtual dictatorship. Those were tough years, hard years, rough years. The formative years of the young pundit was now over, but not so for his life as a politician. For from 53, 63, 73, the years rolled on into decades, and if they thought it was over, for he and his colleagues, even more difficult days lay ahead. That journey was the roughest journey. I recall in these elections, and if I move to 73, they start seizing ballot boxes before the Kongs and that sort of thing. One of my greatest experiences still stand out at Cane Grove when they were refusing to seal the box. And I insisted that the box be sealed. In a short span of time, the whole village came out and surrounded the polling station. And uh, they were insisting to move the box. And while I was talking, a lady jumped in front of us and said, 
kill me if you want, but this box can't move. And I recall going in front of her because the policeman then lifted the gun on her. And when I went in front of her, he removed it. Eventually, the box was sealed, and those people in Cane Grove, the famous Cane Grove, ran behind that vehicle to Strathaven to see that the box is picked up in a very peaceful manner there too. And then we were brought to Mahaika Public Road by the bridge. Near to that bridge was a department of public works. The boxes were taken there. And I felt this was fantastic. I'm doing well. That the boxes are now secured. We can have a fair count. I felt good. To my shock, at a certain hour that night, 11.30, 11 o'clock-ish, the soldiers came in with a truck. And of course, I was standing just in front of the building. And one put the gun on my chest and kept me there until all the boxes were removed to the vehicle. And the man held the gun, pointed to me, walked back, you know, that kind of reverse walking. Get into the truck until he held the gun and the truck removed. But before that experience, there were quite a number of people wrong, but when the soldier put the gun on my chest. I wasn't seeing anybody, I thought I was alone. And one man crawled out from under bridge because there was a pile opposite, what we would call a cake shop. And he said to me, Pandit, may see everything. May pray for you. That man's name is Pandit Surj Deo. He was not a PPP man. I think he was with the Liberator then. They had some a party called Liberator. Subsequent to 73, uh, I was counting agent, Clinton Collymore, myself, Narbada Prasad, Gail Tashira. Those names I remember distinctly. I, I can picture the scene. We went there to get into the school, Brian Fell Multilateral, I think it is called. We were not allowed in. But initially when we were there, the police were stopping us. And suddenly there was a change, possibly a transformation from police to army. Again, both Collie Moore and I experienced guns on our chest for, for a long, long time. But before that, Gail as a member of the Elections Commission was not allowed in. Narbada was, I think, agent, he did not allow them, and all of them had statutory right to be there. Gail was a member of the commission, and yeah, Gail walked with the Gazette, I remember that distinctly. So Kalimor and I left alone. But when we thought that life was in danger now, I said, I'm going to call the chairman of the elections commission. We have to get to him and so on, and I start talking. They dropped the gun, and I remember Kalimori using the word reap chal. Chal, that means let's move from here. In 1980, when we were looking at the elections, elections were most unfair, they were savagely rigged, and it was a kind of a military operation being carried out. We, together with Mr. Narbada Prasad, and some other people whose names escaped me at this particular moment. I can remember them later. We had to go and check the voters list. We had to go and check the, at the register, the counting center. And when you write that the counting center, it was like an armed camp. And although we had the authority to enter, to look into what is happening, to ensure the votes are being counted, we were prevented from going in there. The place was surrounded by troops. And I had the experience of a, a machine gun being put at my chest. I don't like to have such an experience again. A machine gun put at my chest and told me, you can't go in there. You can't go in. And the same thing happened to Mr. Rupertman Prasad. He had to turn back because he would be shot down at that place. They were really rough days. Children did not know anything about potatoes, alu. So when eventually we got them, they still want the Tanya and Edo's 
and that sort of thing. For information, I moved a motion in the parliament to return some of these ingredients, particularly dal and flour. And I argued vehemently for it. Of course, the motion was voted out. It, it was defeated. We had to be in touch with the people. And one of the things that has influenced the success and sustainability of the People's Progressive Party is the fact that it kept with the people. It came out of the masses, it remained with the masses, it was a grassroots party, and we used to be all over the country holding meetings, bottom house meetings, public meetings, pickets, protests, vigil. I remember standing day and night before the parliament and picketing. We went through that in full harass and all sorts of things. You name it, and we lived it through and passed it through. As Martin Carter had written, this is a dark time, my love. For the PPP and their colleagues, it seems as though this was the blackest of all. But why did Pandit Repo de Manpasod stay when thousands were rushing away from these shores trying to find greener pastures abroad? I love Guyana, and I still do. I was persuaded by a number of people to go to Canada, to go to America, these countries in particular. At one time, people said, come and live in Trinidad. And people wanted me as a pundit. And while a number of people seized the opportunity to go for a better material life, I remained here and I struggled and bear all the deprivation, the difficulties, the challenges, the threats. And I'm here to the present moment. I've lived my whole life in Guyana and for Guyana whether I serve culturally, religiously, politically. I feel in whatever field I have been serving, it was the overall good of this country. And during these years, I found people of all creeds, all color, sharing the view that we must work to better Guyana. And I did not allow myself to be induced or persuaded to go abroad to seek for greener pastures I remain here, struggled, battled, fought, so that this country can be a better place. And it looked like I'm still there trying to make it a better place.